Hey, how you guys doing today? Um, this is Justin uh, checking in with you guys. Um, the Lord laid it on my heart to post a video today. Um, it's going to be on the basis of the gospel. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go into prayer. I want to get right into the video. Uh, dear Lord, let this be a good video. Let it inspire. Let it educate. Uh, and let it also uh, edify. Um, be with all who watch this video, Lord. Let it bless them, dear God. And, and Lord, bless the words of my mouth. Let me speak concisely to the point and let it just be impactful in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we're going to get right into it. So we're going to talk about the gospel. Um, in the basis of salvation, uh, a lot of people, um, they will try to, you know, live by the law, the law, the commandments, the law of Moses, um, you know, the Ten Commandments. And those are impossible standards for us to live by. And that is why God sent his only begotten son to to the cross to die for our sins. Um, we're going to read a basic scripture. A lot of you have heard of it. It's John 316. But we're going to really break it down. Um, so let's turn to that. John 316. I just got a new Bible. Um, I actually collect Bibles. I have a Bible fetish. So I like to collect Bibles. And I got a new one. So I need to study and get into this one. Even though it's, you know, it's obviously the same. But I like to highlight certain verses. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life so for God God let's go to 17 for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved if you go to 18 he who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God so it says, he who does not believe is condemned already. Let's go up to 16. Um, for God so loved the world. So God loves us. He loves each and every one of us. He loves the world. He gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ is the only begotten son of God. That whoever believes in him, which are the believers, um, people like you and me, uh, um, people that really believe in believe in Jesus Christ that he was sent to earth to die for our sins should not perish but have everlasting life that's good news that's the good news for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved so we can we cannot get into heaven based on our our good works we're going to have to get into heaven through faith in Jesus Christ. That the work he did on the cross was enough. So if, if, if you are a person that says, that, hey, I'm a good person, um, you know, you need some more understanding on how, how it works. And it doesn't work like that because you can, you can be the best person in the world, but no one here was perfect except Jesus Christ when he walked the earth. So basically, if you have, if you have ever looked at a woman and lusted, or if you have ever stolen in your life, or if you have ever told a lie, then technically, you will not get into heaven, because you do not accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. By doing that, accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that edifies you, that wipes away your sins, and is cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. So your sins are automatically forgiven. Once you believe in Jesus Christ, those who do not believe in Jesus Christ, um, their sins are not forgiven. They're going to be judged off of their 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 merits. They're trying to they think they can go to heaven by, you know, just just being good. And that's that's not that's not the case. So I want us to to break down 17. We're looking at John, the Gospel of John, verse 16 through 18. 17 says, for God did not send his son. Well, we went over 17. Excuse me. Let's do 18. He who believes in him is not condemned. So just like I was saying, I believe in Jesus Christ, so I am not condemned. 
because I have, like everybody else, I have a past and he has forgiven my, my past, he's forgiven my sins. But he who does not believe is condemned already. So a person that does not believe in Jesus Christ is already condemned. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I think 19, it would do some justice to bring 19, verse 19. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their evil deeds were evil. Let's go ahead and finish it. Verse 20. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been been done in God. So everyone practicing evil hates the light. Mm. That's why you see that a lot of the Pharisees, um, you know, they did not approve of Jesus Christ because it says everyone practicing evil hates the light. So they hated him. And does not come to the light lest his deeds be exposed. If they would have came to Jesus, their deeds would have been exposed. Just like when they had people selling merchandise in the temple, um, those were some of the deeds that were exposed. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. Let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 2, 8 through 9. So, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Let's read that again. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we're saved through grace. You have been saved, for by grace you have been saved through faith. So we need to believe in his grace, and we are saved. And that not of yourselves, not of our own works. It is a gift from God. Because you remember what I said earlier. He sent his only begotten son to take away our sins. It was a gift from God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. So it's, it's not about our works. It's not about I've done this. I've given this much. I've done this. I've helped the poor. I've done, Even though you should be doing those things. But it's not about that. It's not about anyone boasting. It's about it's all about Jesus Christ. It's about what he did for us. Now, there's also a. If you want to unpack it, a lot of so so some people will take take I talk about this on a previous video. We talk about false grace. Some people take it to a, a whole nother extreme and say, OK, I believe in Jesus, so I can do whatever I want and I'm going to be forgiven. I got an answer for that. Let's go to um, the book of Romans. Chapter six, one through two. Let's go to Romans. This is the Apostle Paul writing to the Romans. So, like we were talking about earlier, it is a gift. We are saved by grace through faith. and But we can't take advantage of that. So let's go ahead and um, read 1 through 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace abounds? Verse 2. Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Hmm. There's another verse that that Apostle Paul writes that says, what fruit do you have in those things that you are now ashamed? So the, the thing about the thing about sin is um, it has consequences. So you can you can still be saved, but there's consequences. Like if you go out there and you let's say somebody cheats on their wife or cheats on their husband, that may end the marriage. They're going to be forgiven by God, but that's going to have, you know, generational effects on the kids. That's going to have effects on. The, the spouse, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, you may be saved by grace through faith, but that does not take away 
the consequences of sin. And that's what a lot of people don't understand because they think everything's going to be, you know, hunky dory if they go out there and sin and do all this stuff. But there's still consequences. Um, there's spiritual consequences, too, um, of that. But you want to be really careful and you don't want to take, you know, the, the, the grace, you know, and abuse it. So he says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace abound? Certainly not. I have the New King James Version. The regular King James Version says, God forbid. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? So you are supposed to be a new person once you are saved. Um, just being saved by grace should just change your life because you know it's a gift from God. Um, I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but you just need to understand the principles of salvation. And if you are ministering to people, um, you need to basically let them know that Jesus Christ died for their mis their sins, died for their mistakes. Um, and once they do accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, you know, they are saved. But they should not abuse the grace. Because Apostle Paul says it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace abounds? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? But that's basically what I wanted to uh, get into with you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it um, impacted you. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to say a prayer and we're going to end the video. Uh, dear Lord, I hope this video was, was great. I hope the video touched many people, opened many eyes. I hope they do not take the grace of your mercy for granted. Uh, be with everyone, O oh Lord. Bless them, protect them, bless their families. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. You guys have an awesome day. Goodbye.